Do you ever feel like your personality is just a little bit too stereotypical? And what can you do about it? Let's talk about it. Well, there's nothing you can do about it because that's just who you are. So just be who you are. Stop complaining. No, that's not what the people want to hear, David. Anyways, there was this viral Reddit thread that was titled, Yo, how do you feel when you're doing something super stereotypically Asian? Do you embrace it? Yeah, this guy, he does Kung Fu. He's an assistant Taekwondo instructor. He loves watching anime and manga. He only eats out at Asian restaurants. And he said, man, I kind of feel like a stereotype because everything that you would think about a stereotypical Asian, I confirm that. And this turned into a whole post about should he embrace it? Should he try to find more diverse influences? Everybody makes their own decisions growing up in America. How much traditional Asian, stereotypical Asian culture are you influenced by? So of course, we gotta get into our own takeaways, the comments section, so make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. Well, you know what is not super stereotypical, but a little bit, David, is smala sauce. It's a Chinese chili oil fused with the Sichuan peppercorn chili oil, but also Italian chili oil. So it's kind of this weird mix. But anyways, guys, pre-orders are still going on right now. Check out the Instagram for all the content that we've been making. So you are saying you're a Chinese guy is making like Chinese fusion oil because <laughs> you probably grew up in the West and you are a Chinese fusion yourself. So yeah, you know, I'm, I'm trying to balance the, the East and the West. Anyways, um, David, so right off the bat, I guess let's get into real quick your personal opinion. Do you feel like a stereotypical Asian? Why or why not? Man, I was thinking about it, and th this is a good Reddit post. You know why? Because it sparks self-reflection, and uh -huh. everybody's answer is different. Even two people in a family could be different, right? I would say this. I do feel like stereotypical in some sense, in the sense of like, you know how on TikTok, there's a people breaking down like, oh, Asian Hooper fits like these things, and he looks like this, and he has a Nike Tech Fleet. Well, I just did a brand deal with Nike for Nike Tech Fleece, you know? Check out so, his Instagram post. Yeah, so I'm saying like, yes and no, but maybe I would say the extent of the mishmash of stereotypes is more rare in the sense that I've studied a lot of Americana culture, both white and black heritage American culture, mm -hmm. as well as international culture from places not Asia, but as well as a very, very deep study of Asian culture. Mm -hmm. So that mix of those things is not stereotypical, but you meet Asians quite often that fit into uh, one or two of those archetypes. Right, well, let's just say out of 10 main Asian stereotypical traits, you might rank, just give yourself a ranking. I don't know, like uh, in, in some ways I would like culinary wise, I might be like a like a seven or an eight, you know, but I just think the combination of of being so deep in all these different right. archetypes is rare. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would say most Asians, I guess on a scale of one to 10, probably have some stereotypical traits, but that doesn't mean you're 10 out of 10. And I think this guy is asking this question, this is my hunch, is that so, probably something happened in his life that made him second guess if being super stereotypically Asian is the best move for him. But was he sort of using, and forgive my language here, guys, like a Chinese nerd scale? Like, or more of an East Asian sort of nerd scale? Right, or because scale, stereotypes that's, for, well, stereotypes for Filipinos are a little bit different. Right, right. right? Or, Fili or even stereotypes or, for Vietnamese people are slightly different. Or is there one scale and Filipinos just rank way less stereotypical on that scale than Chinese do? He's so, basically dude. saying, yo, man, am I too much of a nerdy Asian? That's kind of what he's asking. And I, and I think what my answer to him is that just based off his, his short description of himself, I don't know what happened in his life, but I would say he's only, he's a little bit, but it really depends on I think how you carry yourself, because I think in America, interest wise, that's stereotypical. Maybe he drinks boba, he likes Asian restaurants, he only likes, he likes to watch JAV and all this right. other like nerdy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> but I'm just saying. You're saying he has the, this phone sideways, but it's probably an Android, watching some sort of like cracked anime stream while he's at Shabu Shabu, right. all you can eat in California. But does he have that American confidence? And I think this American confidence in who you are can carry you very, very far and can make a lot of people feel differently about you. I'm sure he feels outside it from white and black culture in America probably. That's why he's questioning. But, but let's be clear here. America, in a mainstream sense, usually has only two polar zones on the spectrum, right? right? White culture, and there's various versions of white culture, right? You have, like, corporate white culture. You have, like, country white culture. But then you have uh, also African-American culture, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the two things. In Asian and Latino groups, Andrew, we often feel the need to triangulate ourselves with either both or one of these polar cultural spectrums, but also our own 
country of origin or region of origin yeah. culture, right? So for Latinos, that would be being in a reggaeton or mariachi music or, you know, the yeah. culinary things. Yeah. And for Asians, that would be more being into K-pop, gay pop, the culinary things from Asia, as well as, of course, Andrew, martial arts or Buddhism. Yeah, exactly. But if they don't choose stere stereotypical, whatever that means, Asian culture, I know some Asians, David, who leaned into almost what you would feel like is stereotypical white and black culture. Like, we know Asians who almost act, I guess, stereotypically black or stereotypically white. Right. And and that was that a function of them wanting to assimilate to have a better life and fit in with the people in their local environment? Or was that just um, like something that just happened organically because that was their nurture? I don't know. But anyways, guys, we're getting to the comment section because there's more discussion to go around. Uh, this first comment is by a woman. She says, I'm basically a walking stereotype. I like boba. I prefer Asian food. I enjoy anime, mangas, Asian dramas, J-Rock, J-Pop, not to mention I'm a gamer. My oh, car has she said she likes the uh, MMORPGs. That's the most Asian. This That's is, the most Asian. This woman says, I, my car has Pokemon stickers. I'm a married woman with, and I'm a mother and I'm not afraid and I'm not ashamed of all this. I embrace that I'm a walking stereotype. Does she have the plushies in the back window, though? Because you oh, used yeah. to see that in the 626. She probably has the Sanrio stickers, like she says. So my response to this is that this is a woman who is proud to be a stereotype. I don't know what part of the country she lives in or what her friends are. I'm sure she's happy with her life. Shout out to her. And I think that this is a good way to go. But I will say this. For a man seeking, and this is for if a dude is seeking American masculine acceptance in America then fully being a stereotype or being stereotypical is tough for a guy. While it may not matter as much for a woman because maybe a woman, she can live still a good life being very stereotypical. But one thing you lose by a man being a stereotypical Asian is like respect from other men sometimes. That's the feeling. Well, specifically, probably non-Asian men or yes. even very assimilated fellow Asian yeah, Other Asians right? too, yeah. Um, I mean, I guess, I would guess that this girl probably grew up in a heavily Asian enclave on the West Coast. It feels like it, because that's where I've seen the most uh, replication of, you know, 90s or 2000s yeah, or 2010 dude, Asia dude, culture. Dude, if she's driving around even Cerritos or San Gabriel Valley or even San Francisco area, not, like, very regular. Right, very right, common, right, right. I guess it really depends on, like, what she's trying to do with her life though, right. right? It is true. If you want to work in music or sports, that tends to be more like urban, black American heritage culture. Or if you want to work in corporate America, or you want to work in uh, finance or real estate, those tend to be more like white culturally. Mm -hmm. Don't don't you need to like adopt to the culture of the industry that you're going to enter? Yeah. Or no, do you I mean, think that, that depending on your upbringing, you'll already gravitate towards various industries? Because if you want to stay very, very Asian, Andrew, you could get a STEM job, be a yeah. computer programmer, yeah. and uh, it's not going to matter because it's going to matter how good you code. Well, you know, if you feel too stereotypical, you know, you have to ask yourself, too stereotypical for what? What yeah. are you trying to do with your life? That's the most important thing. And, and you know, this guy... I don't know if he really provided those details right. to, to fully flesh out the post. He said, I do whatever I want unapologetically. Who cares if it's stereotypically Asian? I embrace no. it. I love being Asian and I'm proud of it. In some ways, I don't feel like I'm perpetuating anything. But however, I'm not going to stop enjoying things because it's stereotypical. Why should I feel bad when it's something, a part of my culture and something that I enjoy? No, you should not feel bad. And I think that being unapologetic about the things that you like, especially if they're Asian, why not? Like, you should be able to stand tall. But, again, we're saying, also, also, if you like all stereotypical Asian things, then don't be surprised if you're walking into a room full of non-Asian people who are very Americanized. You don't mean non-boba drinkers. Yeah, like, you walk into a non-boba no, drinking non -Asian place. Non-Asian files. And, you're, and don't be surprised if people don't know what you're talking about. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that's fine. Everybody should live their life, but also just know what they're getting into. I yeah, think that's and I think thing. in terms of like, these are very fishbowl industry specific, like things to your individual goals and your aspirations. However, if you're just talking about having a sense of community, I think it's easier nowadays in 2023 to be what into whatever niche things you are, whether they're big niches, medium niches, or small niches, and build community around that because there's Twitch and there's mm. Discord and there's cosplay conventions and there's Comic-Con. Uh, I think 
10, 20, 30 years prior, it was much more difficult to find that in your local community. But nowadays with the internet, the ability to, to find your tribe and your vibe is your tribe and things like that. Somebody said, are white people apologizing for doing things like listening to country music and having BBQs? Are Mexican people apologizing for eating tacos and watching Lucha Libre? I would say maybe, are, are do black people apologize for listening to hip hop and going to uh, being in a basketball or football? Yeah, no, and... and um. Obviously, those things are all generally more accepted as part of American culture, while a lot of Asian culture is still kind of seen as like uh, niche, nerdy, or alien. Because it comes from the Eastern Hemisphere yeah. versus emanating from the Western Hemisphere just based on a global uh, latitude, longitude situation. But I right? do think that acknowledging that a lot of Asians are questioning themselves about this goes to show you how often uh, we're raised with like a kind of self-doubt or an inferiority complex about Asian culture. And I've been through something similar where, you know, sometimes you reject Asian culture when you're young because you're just trying to fit in. You're like, I want to be cool. I want to be American. And then later in life, you're, you're able to balance it all, which I think is the beauty of America, which I think is great. I think that's the best place to be in America um, rather than only be 100% in one way or the other. Do you right? think that this guy posing this question and all these people sort of pontificating in the comments section are from the older generation? generation where genre mashing seems more odd and maybe like somebody who's let's just say 25 and under and with heavy internet exposure may not struggle with this balance as much yeah yeah maybe i don't know i mean i i know that there's still a lot of like depressed young kids out there too so i don't know if this this is one of the issues that they're dealing with but somebody yeah. says uh you're only thinking that way because of what have you've been predisposed to while living in a country that far too heavily magnifies racial differences and has unfortunately affected the lens with which we live and view the world with as you can see here with this very post so don't let that affect you because none none of the things you are doing are wrong at all no and that is a good point that the the asian culture being into asian culture usually is not a negative on your life. It can make you nerdier or different than other people, but it's never gonna make you a like a worse person, so. Yeah, also one of the things I wanna say is like Asian culture, when you travel back to Asia, especially nowadays, it's very different. They have people that are very much into American culture yeah. over there. I mean, there's like, you know, people doing all types of things that used to be considered Western, but completely living their life wholly in the Eastern Hemisphere. Right, that's So true. it's not necessarily like we only got to be things that emanated from the East a thousand years ago, even though those obviously are legitimate columns and pillars of Asian culture. Somebody saying, uh, I'm kind of the opposite. I wish I could be good at something stereotypically Asian. I suck at math. I always had bad academic performance. I'm unemployed. I only make a part-time income. I'm unmarried at 35. I can't read Chinese. I know very little science, medicine, engineering, tech. I fidget and I can't concentrate. I wish I could be more Asian. Wow. Wow. He's kind of saying like, man, I would love the structure and the focus to be a stereotypical Asian. That's he, very interesting. Right. He's talking about what being, uh, having the, what the filial piety or the Confucianism yeah. or some sort of scholastic aptitude that was more heavily had weight on it in the East. Perhaps the grass is always greener, my fellow. Yeah. But I mean, it's not to say when you go to Asia, there's, there's bad students too. Yes. Yeah. It's just a lower proportion ratio because all the parents are kind of Asian-y. Um, this guy was saying one of the great privileges of living in America is you can be an individual and carve your own lane. I'll, I will agree with this because, Andrew, you look at uh, Jamal Williams in the NFL. He's always like, you know, Sergeant First Class, Swagger Kazakage. You know what I mean? Like, he's in the NFL and he's promoting anime every day. He's doing the reverse in the sense of like, he's probably very rooted in African-American culture and the masculinity surrounding that, but he's trying to promote something that's outside of that stream. Right. So I guess, shouldn't these people like be like, yeah, it's all about how you represent it too. Yes. I think, I think America's all about marketing something, man. If you market it like it's the coolest thing, super confidently, and you're unapologetic, and you've mastered it, that's the best way to convince people. Right. Or something. But you say, are you saying that you can't just live in it in an aloof, detached way, not understanding how everybody's perceiving you, though? No, yeah. Like, I, I, you know, obviously everybody loves Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan admittedly doesn't know a lot about certain American cultures, but he's unapologetic about it because he's mastered his world. So once you know you've mastered a world, you're able to confidently use that to share with other people. And I mm. think that's the best. And 
You know what it is? How about this? Master your world, and I'll pop up the dictionary definition right here, but don't be aloof to the other tribes and, like, uh, lifestyles around you. Yeah. Like, don't be completely unaware of how they would perceive it. Right. So anyway, Andrew, ultimately, what's your final takeaway, man? I think that people want to be a into Asian culture the way their parents or their grandparents were, but they don't want to feel like they're just, like, living in that bubble. They still want to know, like, you know what I mean? I think people want to bring something to the potluck of America, even if they're stereotypical Asian things, and have other people sample and enjoy and be exposed to them. But sometimes there's a disconnect between being that thing and then being like a PR rep for it to other tribes. Yeah, yeah. I feel like in general, don't stop consuming and being who you are. You know, be into all the Asian culture that you want. But I do think at the end of the day, people are going to respect you for being like effective, effective in your life and effective in the world. Now, if you're into all those niche things, you still get stunned, you're, get stuff done. You're a respectable person. You're fit. You know what I mean? Ultimately, that's the best way for people to respect you regardless of your interests, you know? So, so if you're, if you've mastered your subculture or whatever it is and people like respect that, then you're going to be good. You're yeah, good you're money. saying some whoever is out there from other tribes is going to feel drawn to it if you just confidently yeah. project it and you you sort of like uh, just I mean, display it in an appealing dude, way. all the coolest Asian icons that we have from the past to present, it, present had some stereotypical traits. None of these Asians were 0% are, are stereotypical. Are you sure talking about Jeremy Lin going to Harvard and getting a perfect SAT score or like... Even Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, what are they stereotypes? I mean, Jackie Chan martial yeah, arts, right? Speaks with an accent, sounds like a Cantonese dad. Like, you know what I mean? Or uh, even Simu, like, I'm saying Simu loves Boba. He speaks Chinese. He's a nice guy. Is that stereotypical for an Asian guy? Kind of. Steven, you, all these, like, you could go down the list. But then they also have traits that are not, too. Exactly. So it's a, the, the best place is the mix. And you, but the stereotypical things that you have about you, balance out with the other things that you're good at that are like, I guess, non-stereotypical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's a difference between like always having this tractor beam of like stereotypical Asian things and then like still pushing outwards, but still always having that almost a uh, hiking carabiner wire that's yeah. like tied back to the old thing. I'll, I will say this too. If you don't want to adapt, let's say for example, there's a young girl who looks like Constance Wu, right? But Constance Wu grew up in Virginia, very, very, very uh, upper middle class, whitewashed sort of upbringing, right? Uh -huh. And this girl's growing up deep in K-pop, K-dramas, J-pop, you know, woo-woo and everything like that. This girl that looks exactly like Constance Wu but doesn't act like her can be a famous Twitch streamer and still have an entertainment in media being an independent producer and still doing her own brand deals and like acting in her Twitch world versus like trying to navigate Hollywood where I will be very frank, Hollywood is a world you need to generally 99.99999% of the time need to have a very deep understanding of culture's not your own if you're Asian, whether mm -hmm. that's white or black culture, you will need a very deep understanding of that to navigate that particular ladder. Mm. So that may, you know what I mean? You gotta judge based off your own individual background, the reps you've seen, your skill sets, which lane you feel like you're gonna be more effective in long term. Right. Yeah, I would say, uh, but yeah, as far as like things they could do, man, like for this guy who's a uh, Taekwondo assistant and he studies Kung Fu, I would say like, Maybe you might feel a little less stereotypical if you also picked up, like, and went to a boxing gym. You know, boxing gyms are very American. That's an American martial arts. Right, that's a Western martial art. Yeah, it's a Western it. martial art with Western people. And, you know, then you're around other people who are respectful, but of a martial arts, but not... And, and can respect you, but may be from a different culture. Because right. anybody- They're not who, gonna know what uwu yeah. means at the boxing gym. Because anybody who joins a Kung Fu class or a, a Taekwondo class are gonna be like more open to Asian culture already. So that's a self-selective population. But when you go to a boxing gym, it's very American. Like they might not right. know anything so about it. So you're Asians. saying don't view your love for Taekwondo or Kung Fu strictly as, oh, it's an Eastern thing. It's an Eastern thing. Yes, it is. But it's also just a martial arts thing. Yeah. And you can it's relate to a, other martial arts people that way. It's a combat thing. Yeah. Anyways, uh, you guys let us know in the comments down below. Do you ever feel like an Asian stereotype? How stereotypically Asian are you? Put yourself yeah. on scale. I got to say, I would say the most stereotypical thing about me is just for sure. I mean, it's at a 10 out of 10 is a love for really deep cut Asian cuisine. I don't even care if it's, if it only exists in like three provinces or two villages of a, any country in Asia, I want to try it. You know what I mean? I don't want to just try the top 10, top 20 dishes. Give me number dish ranked 642 in that country. No, man. I, I think I got some pretty stereotypical facial features.
Yeah. My you eyes, know what's interestingly enough? Eyes are pretty stereotypical. I feel like people more have visually identified you as more stereotypical than me off the bat. Like when they looked, I remember one time you were in a rap battle back in the day when that, by the way, that was huge. Uh, they, were go, they were like, yeah, put down the mic. This Asian looks like he plays Counter-Strike. And you did play Counter-Strike. A little bit, yeah. yeah. But I wasn't a big gamer either. All right, anyways, guys, uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, it was an interesting discussion. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.